Jerome Jantz photographs people that are real and imagined, virtually there but nowhere to be found. They count on the kindness of strangers, hundreds of thousands of strangers, yet they are very much alone in a world of mukbang, virtual singers, ASMR, and live streamers. Please welcome Jerome Jantz. Hello, good afternoon. I have a French accent, but I think I'll be fine. <clears throat> Virtuality has always been a big part of my life. As a child who grew up on a small island you cannot even see on the map, the only chance I had at this time to travel was to imagine what was behind the ocean. I had no internet, of course, no magazines, unfortunately. Among the places, I dreamed to explore the Himalayas. Later, I moved to Paris, and after my study, I became a web analyst. I had a really comfortable life by working on internet. But in 2013, thanks to a documentary watch on YouTube, my Himalayan dream came back to me again. I quit everything in France to give a chance to my dream. I started a journey by land to the Himalaya, and along my way, I discovered photography. I took my first photos. It was really tough, you know, because I had to trust the truck driver while I was hitchhiking. I had to try to introduce myself, you know, in, for many kind of different cultures. And finally, I managed to arrive in 2015 in Nepal. And there I met Eric Valli, you know, this guy who jumped from the cliff to photograph the only hunters of Nepal. And he said to me, oh, dude, you take great photo, you have a good eyes, but it's not enough. What you need to do now is to pick up a topic and start to make your own photo story. I had no idea what was a photo story, but I wanted to talk about how the internet today impacts our lives. By doing this, I will never imagine that I was going to dive into a connected world populated by disconnected people. The Asian live streamer were the first person I met. At the first time, uh, uh, sorry, uh, at the first sight, the live streamer, they look like the phone they use. They are easy to manipulate, they are smart. They can even follow you in your pocket wherever you go. They, they are also like multitask. They can dance, they can sing, they can talk for you at any time. Like in this photo, a huge bowl of noodles, can be burgers, spicy food, kilos of lobster, uh, 2,000 calories of donuts. We call them the mukbang live streamer in Korea. And the new trend now is to provide really, really great song to the, to the fan behind the camera. So hungry. I've started to explore this world by using those apps which pretend to connect the user and the fans together. And what I discovered really blew my mind. Every day until late night, millions of users across Asia send virtual stickers to the live streamer. One virtual sticker can cost thousands of euros, thousands of dollars. I was obsessed, you know, to figure out What's so special with the live streamer to make the fans so addicted to them? I wanted to put a face on the username. And to do so, I had to forget everything I supposed to know about my job as a web analyst. You know, you cannot open, it's not enough to open the life of people home just by statistic, figures, or tracking code. You have to get back to something more essential. And for me, it was listening questioning, 
and observing. And this is maybe my definition of storytelling. It's a place you are ready to give to others in your life. And for me, it helped me to capture this invisible link which link people together in the reality. In this way, I met Genji. He's from Taiwan, and he worked as a worker in a factory. And he said to me, you know, I have no one, no friend to talk with. I watch the live streamer because they are the only one who can remember my name. They are the only one who can remember my name. That's the reason um, Genji keeps 30% of his salary every month to offer the virtual sticker to the live streamer. Like him, 30% of Taiwanese, 30% of Korean declare that they have this feeling of loneliness. We are surrounded by millions of devices, by millions of peoples, but in case of crisis, we struggle to have someone to talk with. I also met Gondo in Taiwan as well, and he never had a girlfriend. And secretly, inside his room, because he still lives at his parents' home, he can experiment what it looks like to feel in love for someone, thanks to the live streamer. And this lack of relationship in the reality feeds a huge loneliness industry. Some live streamers, they say to me, they can earn $500,000 a month just by receiving virtual stickers from the fans. And you can clearly understand why in China, almost 50% of the Chinese students consider to give a try to become a live streamer in the future. Because in one month, they can earn what they will have to work 10 years in you know, hard working in, the, in their village. And by the way, also, a dog can be a famous live streamer <laughs> and have an Audi car. <laughs> the, Owners of those apps, live streaming apps, are definitely the biggest winner of this game because they know perfectly how to take advantage of what the fans they miss the most in the reality. Love, friendship, and intimacy. But what is the price to pay behind? And I was so surprised because the fans, of course, they don't know that behind the colorful background, the live streamer have to work 16 hours a day, seven days a week, without any break. Because for the fans, losing, for the live streamer, sorry, losing fans doesn't mean losing friends, it means losing money. And let's go back again to those colorful background. You know, it's crazy because the live streamers, they know how to promise intimacy, colorful background, but in front of them, they don't even have a window. And those live streamers are completely under the control of the fans. Like uh, on these photos, I photograph um, Lee, and he had a punishment from the fan because he arrived late at his live streaming session. So he had to sleep in front of the camera for the fans. And photographing Anse, a Korean live streamer, was like a warning for me. On this photograph, she was blocking the camera against her body to avoid the fan to localize uh, where she lives. Because some fans, they try to zoom, you know, uh, into the eyes of the live streamer to try to guess where they live. And the same night, she lost her phone and she was completely under panic. And of course, because she put all her memories, secret photo inside. And she success to be a really great live streamer. She earned uh, $20,000 a month. But now she struggled to um, feel her life of happiness. And she, she has to wear masks, different kind of masks, like this one to make the, you know, the face uh, whiter, to make sure to, to please the fans. And this is her. But there is no time for the live streamer to complain too much, because beside some other virtual idol, with endless possibilities, are so well motivated to try to attract the fans to make them fall in love for them. This is Atsune Miku, 
She's the biggest virtual singer in the world. She doesn't exist, she's just an hologram. Tsune Miku, virtual idol, have a real uh, pop star statue. Attending one of the concerts costs 200 euro, dollar, sorry, I'm still in France. <laughs> and for a good reason. For the, um, for the fans, the virtual idol are finally like this spark into um, the darkness of the fan life. But it's more than that. I met Andy, he's from Taiwan, and he said to me, you know, the virtual world is like a religion for us, but in a better way. You guys, you have churches, but for us, we believe on the internet. And I also met in Japan this Buddhist monk, and he built a whole religion based on Atsune Miku, because what he wants to do is to try to help all the fans to break down the taboo of uh, the society, those topics they cannot talk with their friends or with their family in the reality. Last year, oh my God. <laughs> I've been invited to this wedding between uh, Gondo and Natsune Miku. I was the only foreigner, black guy, middle of the Japanese, and it was just crazy, you know? And I was constantly dizzy between reality, uh, virtuality, modern, tradition, uh, even about kissing a doll, uh, okay. Even between um, doll guest and human being guest. <laughs> And Gondo um, paid $15,000 for this wedding because he believes that he, he considers himself as a pioneer. What he wants to do is to help the other fan to finally be happy uh, by loving a virtual idol. And they don't care too much, those fans, about uh, to share Atsune Miku. And I met Roger, and Atsune Miku is everywhere from his car to his home and is his office. And thanks to Atsune Miku, he shares also um, his daily life with her on Twitter, and he can travel the world with her. And he attends all the concerts of Atsune Miku. In France, I met uh, Xavier. He's a French fan of Atsune Miku, and he said to me, you know, human being disappointed me. Everything in the life today, in the reality, is not made to last. And finally, thanks to Atsune Miku, I found a shelter. One month ago, I get back to Japan because I really wanted to have some news of Gondo and his wedding. And it was his first anniversary. And he shared with me some photos of the honeymoon. And I say, but, and, and we talk about, uh, you know, the differences between a real, a real uh, relationship and virtual relationship. And he said to me, of course, there are many differences. But there is one common point, the love and the loyalty you put into this relationship. And I was so surprised, you know, because at the wedding I met a small doll with him. He was working with uh, vegetables, I don't know the name in English. And this is the new version of Atsune Miku he has now. And I was keeping thinking about this uh, virtual world, you know, because uh, pff, it's just crazy for me. And I finally understand um, what the fans think. And of course they know that those virtual idols, they don't exist, they are not stupid people. But finally, 
thanks to those hologram, the love will last forever. Thank you.